Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. While having experienced the stress of financial pressures, Cormac O'Neill felt that businesses needed to change their approach to debt collection. As a result, Webio was born. Using conversational artificial intelligence, the platform seeks to improve the engagement process between businesses and their customers, and Cormac joins us now to tell us more. Cormac, start by providing us with an insight into your own background. So my own background, Carl, is in finance. Um, I graduated from the University of Ulster in the 1990s. Uh, When I came out of college, you know, there wasn't a whole lot happening in Ireland at the time, so uh, I actually packed my bags and went off to uh, to Philadelphia in America, uh, where I did an MBA in finance, uh, studied out there, worked out there for four years. Then I came back to Ireland in the kind of like the late 90s, just when the whole internet, um, the internet boom was taken off. And while I qualified as an accountant, Carl, yeah, accountancy wasn't my passion. Uh, I always wanted to get into uh, starting um, my own company. So uh, with a couple of partners, I started my first company in 1998, and it was around the time the whole Internet was, was exploding. Uh, and we set up a, an online travel uh, company around that time that was, was, was quite successful. Um, and I've been involved in a number of startups uh, since then, uh, culminating in, in Webio uh, to where I am today. Where did the initial idea for Webio come from? Yeah, so look, when you're an entrepreneur, um, you're inherently a risk taker, and I am inherently a risk taker, and sometimes, as, as we know, risks don't come off. Um, and I had a project that, that didn't come off, and you know, it left me in a, uh, a very challenging financial position, and I had a lot of uh, creditors that I was trying to deal with and trying to handle, um, and I found it very challenging, very stressful, Carol, to be honest. Well, I appreciate enterprises and companies are owed money. I always thought that if they took a different approach to it, um, they'd actually be more successful. They would, they would collect more money and they would do less brand damage to their brand by taking a different approach. And that's essentially you know, where the seeds of Webio were sown through my own experience of having that financial journey and how I got through it. Um, and hence, we, we, we set up Webio. So what was that different approach that you had in mind at the time? Yeah. So look, first and foremost, it's built around um, respect and communicating with people um, through the channels that they like to be communicated with and taking a more empathetic approach to how you, uh, you know, to how you collect um, uh, money. You know, I like to say that the old, you know, the good fellows approach that, that would have been used in, in the 80s and 90s, um, you know, is no longer valid. And you can't use that today in terms of, of how you engage and interact with, with customers. Um, so we said about looking at a more empathetic way, a more user friendly way in terms of the end consumer and how they wish to communicate with with a company that they owe money to you know telephone conversations can actually be very stressful not just for the person who owes the money but also for the, the individual whose job it is to carry out those conversations um, so we took a different approach in terms of having these conversations across messaging apps whether that's sms whatsapp messenger viber and how you might have those conversations which don't have to be real time they can be asynchronous to give the person the time to think about answers um, and do it in their leisure. And we just find that it is a much more effective way of, of having communications um, w- with companies. Is the content of that message just as important as the medium? Yeah, absolutely, Carl. We're, we're, we're very big on this in terms of, you know, what I say to our customers is words matter. Uh, and words really do matter in terms of how you engage with a customer. And our platform enables our customers, which are the enterprises and the companies that are owed money, to use different languages or language when they communicate with their customers. You know, our, our platform will prompt, it'll, it'll prompt the agents or indeed uh, an automated conversation to use various types of language, maybe softer language for a certain type of debt. And look, there are times when you have to use uh, 
let's call it harder language at at, at later stage that to to get uh, you know to get an outcome. Um, but the words really really do matter, and the timing of when you use words within conversations can have a huge impact uh, on the metrics that matter to our customers. So talk to me, Cormac, about the type of customers that you're working with. Yeah. So. Our customers tend to fall into three different verticals, um, you know, e-commerce. So these will be large uh, enterprises that sell products on credit online. There's, there's plenty of them out there today, and it's, it's an area that's actually booming, as we know, since the pandemic. Uh, the second vertical then will be utilities. We're all familiar with electricity, gas, water, and we all consume that on credit. We, we, uh, we run up a monthly bill or a quarterly bill, and, and then we pay that. And unfortunately, some of us fall into arrears. Uh, and then the final area, which you know would be would be straightforward enough enough, is financial services. So you know these are typical, you know, financial institutions that either lend consumer credit, whether it's uh, a loan for a car or a mortgage, um, or indeed collection agencies that are tasked with collecting them. So that's where our customers tend to, um, to tend to come from. So it can be defined as conversational artificial intelligence. So in essence, how does this work, and what growth is expected? Expected in this space over the coming years, air machine learning or AI, as it's, as, as it's very well known today, um, is all about figuring out the intent of a customer. Right. So, you know, we all know this ourselves. Anytime you engage with a company or an enterprise, you're doing it for a reason. And the quicker that company can figure out what that reason is the quicker you can get a resolution. So, for example, in in our world, I might be contacting a a bank or somebody I owe money to to um, find out when my next payment is due, or maybe I want to find out how much is owed or how much I am in arrears. These are very, very simple uh, questions that I really don't need to be waiting half an hour on hold to get an answer for. If you use the Webio platform, or if one of our customers is using that platform, those questions can be automatically answered. Uh, our platform is listening for the intent. The intent is, I want to find out what my imbalance is. We will extract that information. We'll go back and interrogate the database and give the answer to the customer. And Cormac, if you were to take a typical client of yours and you were to look at the conversations that happen in their business through Webio each day, what percentage of those conversations are diverted to to a human at some stage? So today, 72% of all conversations across our platform have some form of automation in them, Carl. Uh, they may be fully automated, like I spoke about there in, term, in terms of what's my balance, etc., etc., or there may be an element of automation um, and transfer to a live agent. Now, what's really, really useful, like we're doing this three years now. It took us a couple of years to develop the product. But when we first started out, um, the level of automation was down in the mid-20s to 30s. Um, So look at how that automation has grown in in what I would consider to be a very uh, short space of time. And that's because it's proven to be effective. You know, like, again, going back to what I said, anytime we want to talk to an enterprise or, or a company, we're doing it to get an answer. And the shortest route we can take to get that answer, um, we're going to do. And that's why automation has been effective in that area. And provide us with an insight in terms of the growth that you've had overseas. Yeah, so we, uh, while we're uh, a a proud Irish company, Carl, we automatically targeted the UK market when when we set up, and that was purely uh, a numbers game. You know, 5 million people here, 72 million people in in the UK, there's going to be a lot more conversations in in the UK. So, and we started to get really, really good traction in in the UK. I mean, we've 27 customers there uh, as I speak today. Um, So we've really got a strong base in the UK, and we're looking to expand on that. But more recently, Recently, we've started to, to look at the EU and, and uh, countries within the e- EU, and in particular Italy. Uh, we recently brought on our, our first customer in Italy, and we do have a couple more um, opportunities in the pipeline there. So we're, we're quite excited about the potential in the Italian market as well. And talk to us about how you managed to get traction so quickly in the UK market. Yeah, so one of the things we've done, actually, which was quite interesting, when we were building the product day one, Carl, we actually engaged with one of the UK's largest online retailers. Um, This is while we were just doing the the, the very first ones and zeros of, of our platform. And we started to get their feedback as we built the product. You know, what do you think it is? And should it do this? Should it do that? And they gave us fantastic feedback. 
the result of which they became our very first customer. Um, they were willing to use the product once it was uh, in beta and ready to roll out. And they were very happy with it. I mean, you know, they had a lot of input into how we built the product. And they became a really good use case for us, a really good case study. And we really leveraged that, the brand and the success we had with that company, to bring on more and more. So, you know, that strategy by engaging with a customer pre-launch of a product and getting their feedback on it, you know, just really worked for us. And Webio has been successful in securing funding for the business and back in 2016, Enterprise Ireland backed the company. How beneficial has Enterprise Ireland been to the business to date? You know what? Absolutely fantastic. I cannot um, uh, uh, you know, say it enough in terms of Enterprise Ireland. They're a really, really great organisation that have been super helpful for, for Webio from, from day one. Um, you know, they, they really do back uh, Irish companies that have got ambition um, uh, and drive. And, you know, I, I cannot speak highly enough of, of it, not just from the investment, which, you know, is, is really um, needed when you're starting out, but it's the soft supports that they give in the markets, like in the UK market, the office they have there and the help they gave us in terms of getting in front of, of customers, you know, going to events. Uh, and then the, the the whole planning and strategic side, the, the programs that EI do around helping you with strategy, helping you with market entry, market discovery, you know, the, the really, I, I think sometimes we take it for granted the, um, you know, the, the the benefit to give. It's a huge, it's a huge resource that we have here in this company for for startups, and I would encourage any startup to engage um, as early as possible w- with EI. Um, because they, they will help you, absolutely. And more recently, Webio secured $4 million to scale its AI platform. Tell us about this journey and what it will mean from a growth perspective. Yeah, so do you know what? We were having a, uh, we, we just, we closed that deal just in June and one of the remarkable things that we were talking about, that whole investment was done virtually, Carl. Um, from the moment that we first uh, were introduced to Finch Capital is the, the VC, a fintech VC out of the Netherlands who invested in us. Right up to the close of that $4 million investment, every single bit of that was done, uh, was done virtually, was done, done online. Um, you know, I only met the, the principal in, in Finch Capital for the first time physically after that. Um, so from that point of view, if you'd have said that to me before, uh, before COVID, that I, I would have been able to do that. I would have said you were, you were mad. Um, but, you know, we did do it. Um, and I think one of the reasons, um, well, you know, that there are a number of reasons, but, you know, Finch really bought into uh, the mission we're on here at Webio. You know, they really saw the need for the solution we provide. You know, they saw the potential growth in defaults, uh, you know, as a result of COVID, as a result of extra credit hitting the the, the market. Um, so they really bought into what we were all about. And finally, Cormac, this morning, what advice do you have for Irish tech startups about how to achieve growth? Do you know what? One of the most powerful things that, uh, you know, I think, Carla, is focus is a huge thing when it comes to startups. Um, I think you've got to be laser focused on the problem you're trying to solve, um, whatever that problem is. Uh, you know, I think as startups, you, it's easy to get distracted, um, you know, as you try to find out exactly where you resonate. But I think it's important that you figure out, you know, who benefits most from the problem you're trying to solve and really focus in on that. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Cormac O'Neill from Webio, and I'd like to thank Cormac for joining us on this morning's show. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.